In the area we're currently in, uh, we're really close to the Oregon Trail. And a lot of that, when you're looking at man land management in general, to know the historical aspects and the historical uses that occurred within your areas is vitally important to um, helping you understand how it got to the state it's in and then how can you, if that's not the state you want to manage for, uh, transition to the state your, your desired plant community and objectives that you're managing for. And so being we're this close to the Oregon Trail, the impacts, historical documents show that there was up to two and a half million to five million different classes of livestock that moved through here and most of them moved in here over a five to six year period or moved through here. So you can just that mass volume of impact, historical accounts said they travel up to five miles either side of the trail to find forage to feed the, the livestock and the horses that they were using um, to, to cross this country with. So just seeing that, I mean, if you're having to move five miles away from a trail, the herbivory impacts to the landscape are great and can stick around for years and decades to come. And so that can also tell you, especially in, in the sandy uh, ecological site can depict, maybe you have you know, an overabundance of rabbit brush or you've lost your bunch grasses and now you're in a sedge, uh, threadleaf sedge plant community. And that could just help you if you know, if that's the state you're in, it, using that history can, can point the way that it got there. It might not be the last 50 years of management, it's the last 150 years that have put you in that state you're in. So now that we've determined we're on a sandy ecological site, we feel pretty good about that. And we have discussed some of the observations we've made about the vegetation. We've uh, talked about historical uses of the land and what may be taking place on the land and really looked at what it is we're seeing all around us in the landscape. Now we really can dig into that state and transition model. And when we look at that state and transition model, we're really trying to focus in on what are the ecological di dynamics of this site? What is really happening to move plant communities around? Do, what are the drivers? What is the disturbance regime? And what you know, what should that, how should that be reflected in the plant communities that we see? And based on our observations that we see here, we may or may not be in the reference state. And once we decide if we are or not, and if we're not in the reference state, then we choose a reference state uh, or that we think we're in. And the important part then, once. Once you think you understand the model and how this site is working and you choose a state that you think represents your site, it's critical that you just don't just use the state and transition model in of itself. What's really important is to go to those plant community narratives that are contained within the ecological site description and really compare those and compare what you're reading to what you're seeing on the ground. And what may appear to be dominant to you may or may not be what really the influencing factors are to that state. Uh, again, a lot of our state and transition modeling are moving toward being a much more ecological process based than just plant community based. And so you may read in that plant community that there is a certain trigger or a certain parameter that really helps solidify the fact you're in a plant community phase. And so looking at that information, again, this preponderance of information that tells us this is the state that we're in. So we've decided on our state and what plant community phase we're in. And I'm just going to use an example here on site, but this is really more general to the process we would go through, is that we have determined that we are in a current plant community phase that is not our desired plant community. And our desired plant community is not dictated by the ecological site description. It is not uh, like we had spoke about earlier. It is not prescriptive from the sense of telling you what your goals are. Really, you need to set your goals based on the uses you expect out of that land. And then, once you've done that, that really should guide you toward that desired plant community. And so you may have a goal of managing purely for livestock forage, and that would dictate one desired plant community. You may also 
say, well, my goal is to create habitat for sage grouse. And that would dictate another plant community. And then there would be instances where you would say, I really want both. And that actually could occur um, and does occur in a lot of our public lands landscapes. In which case then there is another desired plant community that may be a little different from each of those two when you're trying to manage for multiple uses. And so when you have your current plant community and then you have your desired plant community, reading that model and reading that narrative really can give you an indication of is my desired plant community even attainable? And if it isn't attainable, what can I do to make the state that I'm in the best that it can be? So if your desired plant community is achievable from your current plant community to your desired plant community, then really that's when the prescriptive part of an ecological site description comes in. And it really should be a repository of this information that we know about the site that tells us that really uh, to, to achieve that, here are the steps and actions and management that needs to occur to reach that, that um, desired plant community. As an example uh, of using the state and transition model to go toward your desired plant community, one of the things that uh, we can do is really look at those plant community narratives and really discuss what are the drivers and the disturbances that typically have taken place on this uh, site and what, what actually has happened to those processes. Have they been slowing down or they've been speeding up? And one of the great plants that gives us an indicator on this site is rabbit brush, which is always present to some degree on a sandy site. But when we start to see it as more dominant than sagebrush, then, we, then it's a real good indicator to us that the disturbance regime in fact has sped up. And you know, on sandy soils, they're very easily disturbed. And so that isn't a very much of a stretch given what we know about the history of the site. So oftentimes we ask ourselves in a management scenario, we really want to do something. And so in the case where we have actually halted or stopped those processes, indeed that is the case we should discuss. What do we do? But oftentimes we have these situations where we have sites that maybe the disturbance regime has been sped up. And maybe there's, it's more of a discussion of what should we not do. And so just to wrap this up, uh, the management implication here is that we probably don't need more soil disturbance on this site. And so management actions that we take that would minimize disturbance on this site are likely better for this individual area. Now, that said, we do need to look at the greater landscape and realize that not every piece of land looks like where we're standing. When we choose these sites, we hope they're representative of the lands that we're trying to manage, but we do need to look at them individually and we do need to make sure we have enough data and information spread across the landscape that we aren't treating everything just as the same. So Karen talked earlier about speeding up disturbance or slowing down disturbance and she used this example in this sandy site for one that may be speeding up the disturbance has occurred and using rabbit brush as an indicator. So they've implemented a, a rest rotation program in this allotment to slow down the um, soil disturbances and alter the season and timing of use that their livestock are present, enabling the land managers to uh, manage for the state they're in and also reach for that desired plant community that was identified within the objectives.